Hello and welcome to Rapid Bytes. Today we're going to look at cross border payments. Here in Rapid Bytes, we'll show you how to work with our API to accept, hold, and disperse funds in various countries using local payment methods. You can check out our developer community at community.rapid.net. Uh, we've got events going on that you can check out and ask anything about the Rapid API. So, so thanks for watching. Again, we're going to look at a cross border payment. This is something related to the e-commerce industry uh, and what Rapid closely does. Of course, you can uh, find cross-border payments in any industry, uh, really where a customer in one country will pay for a product or pay for a service in another country, typically paying from uh, one currency to another. Uh, I've, looked, I've linked several FX videos below that you can check out and walk through the Postman examples, talking through uh, some of the objects uh, involved as well. I'm gonna head over uh, and first jump into some of our pages, some of our documents here. Uh, first, we have a cross-border commerce uh, you know, report, the global state of cross-border commerce for 2022. You can check that out. Just go to rapid.net, search up uh, cross-border, and this will pop up. Also, here again is our uh, fintech community, uh, develop, rapid developer community. Uh, we've got tons of fintech content, uh, including cross-border uh, topics. Uh, you can open up a topic and ask a question, ask away yourself. Here's just a, uh, just a page of our use cases. Of course, accepting payments online is huge and a big part of what Rapid does. Uh, this can include cross-border uh, as well we do cross-border disbursements. Uh, here is the API reference page and the request that we will be doing today, uh, you can check that out uh, on our documentation. Uh, let me head over to Postman and check out uh, what this looks like for uh, payment. So let me just go, uh, let me look at <clears throat> uh, an existing card. And so here's one with no fees. Uh, Here's one with fees. Typically, uh, you do want to include fees um, if you are going to make money on uh, cross-border payments. And so that is way too much. You know, one thing that I have been <clears throat> uh, really involved in, in buying is, is shoes. <laughs> uh, I love different uh, types of specialty shoes right now getting into actually... Uh, <clears throat> what is it called? Uh, barefoot shoes, and so those are about you know, you know, really nice. I guess you could look for a pair of shoes at 180, and this would be euros. <clears throat> and so, if this was fixed side buy, um, these would be uh, here in USD. So. I'm going to choose USD here, but uh, these would be euros. So this would be 180 euros sold, um, fixed side buy. Uh, and again, this means uh, that the customer is uh, basically paying in, uh, <clears throat> in this currency. And so let me jump and change to a USD uh, payment method. And so... <clears throat> Let's see if we can find on a card here. Here is some fields. Jump to the, oh. So I now here I'm posting sandbox fields. Uh, this is test fields for a, a sandbox uh, card payment. And let me jump to, although this could be displayed in bank transfer, uh, but this is something that I literally did earlier today. So <clears throat> so here we have the example now. We have the amount, uh, currencies in euros, requested currency, fixed side buy, um, uh, and then the expiration date. I think that should be good to go. Uh, let's just increase that just in case. And then this will go to base 100% in this e-wallet you could say this is the seller's wallet 
And they, these are the payment fees and FX fee that are being charged. So I'm gonna go ahead and send that. And looks like it went through, it is successful. Here's the payment ID you can use to retrieve it, the amount. It is closed because this is uh, a card sandbox payment. Uh, of course, you could enable 3DS if I linked or marked that down here. Uh, you have now the payment card payment data. This is the saved card now, uh, as well as the customer token. So the next time I can uh, go uh, in, uh, it will remember me if you are able to uh, draw this customer token. Uh, this uh, this could incorporate into a flow of me saving my payment method. Also, you could write save card data. Um, and then here you have the amount as well as the tax amount um, or the, the fees that you've added, uh, which in the uh, trans, uh, transfer or the currency exchange, it amounts to 205.59. Um, and so, <clears throat> yeah, uh, this is uh, the payment and what it looks like if I retrieve that now. Actually, oh, let me switch that. Okay, now I can retrieve this payment. Grab that right there. All right, looks like uh, this has been retrieved, and now you see again the amount. Uh, and um, let me grab this e-wallet actually and show you or I can retrieve the e-wallet balance all right and so <clears throat> now we see uh, this has multiple balances USD euros, uh, great British pounds. Uh, I can show you and run this again. Uh, 205.59. Um, and we could see here again in euros, this went up uh, from the previous amount, 205.59. Um, awesome. So uh, yeah, we just walked through one simple payment. In, that would be an example of a cross-border payment with some fees added to it. Uh, the buyer paid in uh, USD and then it was uh, received, uh, it was presented to the buyer and then um, added to the wallet in euros, uh, which is right here. So, um, awesome. So, um, yeah, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to comment below or, or, or go to community.rapid.net. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.